praise the Lord, 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 praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, we give all the glory, all the honor, all the praise to you. Even now, you are healing us. Even now, you are setting us free. You are healing our mind. You are healing our body. You are healing our spirit. Bless us in this morning's message. Let the entrance of your word stretch us, challenge us, open our eyes, minister to us in a powerful way. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. We thank you. The entrance of your word brings light. Let it bring light. Let there be light. Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. Well, praise the Lord this morning. Welcome to live class where we challenge you. You challenge your life to L-I-F-E. L for living. I for everything that has to do with investing your life. F for your finances, your friendships, your fellowships. And E for empowerment, for equipping. Praise the Lord. In life class, we challenge you on all aspects of life. We're coming to the end of the year. And we're looking at a new year, very close. Matter of fact, in Greek mythology, the name they gave January suggests a door. Janus, in Greek mythology, is the god of doors. We believe in only one god, Jehovah. So January is the door to the new year. So one is about to end, another one is about to start. Today, in life class, I want to challenge you on strategic living strategic living strategy is a military word that has to do with how to win a battle how to win in life soldiers don't just march to war they go with a strategy when the children of israel were to take jericho god gave them a strategy when they were to take ai the people who once defeated them they were given a strategy for you to make impact with your life, for you to truly, truly maximize life, you're gonna have strategy. So our life is like a race and we've got to run that race properly. So the Bible tells us in Hebrews 12, verse one and two, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles or besets. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. So God has marked out a race for you. You are already in it. For each one of us, there is a race to run. The race, what is this race? It is the purpose of life. It is the reason why you are here. That is what your race is. Interesting. I can't run my wife's race. She can't run mine. No one can run it for you. You got to run it yourself. It is our responsibility to discover that purpose and run that race to the finish. Unfortunately, some people blame others for where their life has ended. Let's not blame people. Let's truly live strategically. A life of strategy will make you to look back like Paul and say, wow, I have kept the faith. I have run the race well. And I pray that as you are coming to the end of this year, we're in November, and December is coming. The ember months will end well, end with testimony, end soundly, end powerfully, end gracefully in Jesus' name. And the coming year will be a year of testimony. Our life is not a sprint, but a marathon filled with many twists, turns, and obstacles. In a marathon, they deliberately designed a marathon to go through villages, major streets, narrow paths, uphill. For example, the Boston Marathon. They have a, a hill they call a breaking hill, where when you get to that hill, it's like a breaking point. Many quit when they get to that hill. Same thing with life. There are twists. There are turns. There are breaking points. There are obstacles. But it is, when it is, it is possible to win. It can be complicated. Life can be challenging. But life should be lived with great excitement and fulfillment. 
not disappointment and discouragement. Too many people live their life on the vegetables of discouragement and disappointment. Listen, 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 listen. You only live once. You have no second chance. The years gone are gone. You can't recover them. So when we talk strategic living today, you need to open your spirit, man, to hear God. Because you see, if you live a strategic life, you will have no regrets. You'll be able to say, I'm ready to leave. I have lived a fulfilled life. Praise the Lord. Life should not be about surviving. It should be about thriving. I see program that says soul survival. No, 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 no. You were not made to survive. You were made to thrive. You were not made to survive. You were made to thrive. And God gives you everything to make you thrive. It's like when you plant a seed, you first of all plant it in the good ground, then you water the seed, then you use a lot of fertilizers because you don't only want the seed to survive and come alive, you want it to thrive. That's why they even celebrate farmers whose farm did not only thrive but grew the biggest products. God wants you to truly thrive. And you should live a life of overflow and abundance. Listen to me. And a life of overflow and abundance, you don't live in somebody else's hand. You are the one to draw the strategy for it. I can't wait for my wife, my children, to ensure that my life is a life of overflow and abundance. They are part of my journey, but I must make effort to see that truly, 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 I live a life of overflow, overflowing joy, overflowing peace, overflowing abundance. That's why Jesus also said to you that the kind of life he invited you to, it's not a life of survival, a stoic, meaningless, happiness, uh, unhappy life, I said happiness, unhappy life. Jesus said in John 10, 10, I have come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. The word life, there is zest, freshness of life, the kind of life God has, the very embodiment of the kind of life God has. Can you imagine God full of worry in heaven? Do you imagine God wringing his hand and say, oh, I just, I've just lost control of planet Earth. I don't even know what to do anymore. These people are not listening to me. Holy Ghost, what are we going to do? No. God is a God of joy and peace and love. Romans 4, 7, 14, 17. The kingdom of God is not food and drink, but peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kind of our God. That's the kind of strategic life he wants for you. So as Christians, we should live our life with purpose, built on the foundation of loving God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength, loving your neighbors as yourself. When you have this kind of commitment, even where people are using you by taking from you, you know they are using you, but they think they are using you. They don't know they are setting you up for more blessings. So if we are to finish the race of life which God has for us in victory and run it day, uh, each day with excitement, there are several strategies you need to employ. When soldiers go to fight, they have a strategy. It is said of Napoleon Bonaparte of France that when he's going to fight his enemies, he will even stage a war among his soldiers. One set will be the enemies. Another set will be the, his own army. Then they will predict the enemy. They will say, okay, what do we know of the people of Strasbourg? What do we know of people of Vienna in Austria? How do they think? Oh, this is the way they think. This is how they are likely to come. All right. If that's how they are likely to come, let us create a strategy that will shock them, surprise them. That was what God also taught the children of Israel, a town called Ai after Jericho. God told the children of Israel, to act as if they are acting foolishly <laughs> going into the country. And so as they act foolishly, as if they are entering the town, the people of Ai came behind them thinking, 
we have captured some Israelis, only to find suddenly that behind them was another set of Israelis. So the ones in front turned around to face them. The one behind them faced them, and they just found they were in the middle. That's a strategy. The enemy was defeated. This morning, I started seven strategies that can make your Christian life robust, that can make your following God robust, that can make you enjoy God. Seven biblical strategies for running your race in victory. They are not the things you haven't heard of before, but we're just blowing the dust off them. I'm telling you to turn them to weapons of living, weapons of victory, weapons of blessing. Number one is prayer. On the 1st of December, KICC will start praying and fasting. Don't make it a mundane, sacerdotal, regular, repetitive experience. Make it a strategy for winning this year and the coming year. What is prayer? Simply communicating with God. Taking, talking to him and listening to him. That's what prayer is, taking your life to God and bringing God's presence into yours. That's what prayer is. It is the foundation of living. It is a foundation of living out with success and fulfillment. When you pray, when you talk to God, you wait for his answer. You know it's going to be all right. And you know that the God whom we serve is the one who said, ask. Jeremiah 33, verse 3, said, ask of me. I will show you. I will give you nations. He said, ask of me. He said, anything you desire. Praise the Lord. He said, call on me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things you don't know. Psalm 2 says, ask of me. I'll give you nations. The ends of the earth for your inheritance. I think Psalm 2 verse 8. So conversation is a part of any vital and growing relationship. You want to know God better? You want to be a friend of God? Start talking to him in prayer. Nothing is too major and nothing is too minor. You feel a pain on your knees? Tell him about it. Praise God. We used to sing a song. Where are you weary? Are you heavy hearted? Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. There's no other sort of friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. So prayer is something you, something you must do. We sometimes measure the quality of a marriage relationship by how well the couples, couples communicate. Marriage where people talk, 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 a lot talk about, I was almost going to say talk about rubbish. No, 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 no. Talk about the smallest thing, the tiniest thing. You just find that even when you didn't talk and you had carried out a step, somebody already knew what you were likely to do. Praise the Lord. We sometimes measure relationship by levels of communication. How do we measure your relationship with God? By you talking to him. Because when you talk to him, God is not uh, one-way traffic. God is not uh, some, someone you talk to and he doesn't answer. He can answer to you in a dream. He can answer you in a voice. He can answer you by a witness in your spirit, Romans 8, 16. He can answer you by suddenly begins to tell you, take, go left, go right. Romans 8, 14. He can answer you in several ways by a signal. He can answer, sometimes, some people say, something told me to not go out. And I'm grateful I never went out. That's something. Is God answering your prayer? Sometimes in a dream, he'll show you very clearly things that are about to happen. The same is true for our relationship with God. Praise the Lord. So true, honest, heartfelt conversation with God is a sign of a healthy relationship with him. You can even report yourself to him because even if you want to hide your anything from him, he already sees it. So you have to say, God, uh, it is you alone that I have sinned against. Forgive me, O God. For First John chapter 1, verse 9, we say we have no sin. We deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to remove us from all unrighteousness. Praise God. So in talking to God, you say, God, strengthen me. You know me better. 
Nobody knows me like you know me. Prayer is a way to strategize your life. So let's look in more detail. How do you use prayer to strategize your life? In your communication with God, you will discover and receive certain elements needed for life's race. What are they? Number one, his will. You discover God's will as you are praying God. Am I supposed to marry this woman? Am I supposed to not marry this woman? If you know how to walk with God, Romans 8, uh, 14 verse, uh, Romans 14 verse, Romans chapter, <laughs> forgive me, Romans chapter 8 verse 17, I think, or 14 verse 17, says the kingdom of God is, is peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. In other words, 12, 17, 12, 17. You, you, when, you, when there's an absence of peace, you just know, all right, ah, this is not God. This woman is not the right woman. That man is not the right man. He looks nice. He has the right kind of things I want. But I lack peace. So you discover his will. You discover his direction. May I have the slide on the screen, please? His direction. God is able to tell you, go left. Go right. Go left. Go right. Glory to God. Then his correction. His correction. You are able to get God's correction for your life. You are able to get God's encouragement. This is what you find in prayer. You can't find it elsewhere. Then you find his strength. You see, the Bible is the general will of God. But in prayer, you find specific will of God. What does that mean? There's a general will of God, which applies to all Christians. But there's a specific to Matthew Ashimolo and God. How will Matthew Ashimolo know it? He'll know it as he finds God's will. As he finds God's direction, as he finds God's correction, as he finds God's encouragement, as he finds God's strength, as he finds God's provision. It is in that specific that God will show me his strength. It is in that specific that God will show me his provision. And you know, the way he does mine may be so unique and different from yours because I have a personal relationship and a personal prayer life that connects me to God. Our personal prayer life, listen, 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 is key to the development of our relationship as children of God and living out the life he has for us on a daily basis. That's when you are able to say, when somebody says, let's go to uh, Timbuktu, you're able to say, no, 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 no. That's not where God is leading me now. In the, in the place of prayer, God can lead you, you know, and eventually you will see that truly this is the leading of God. When I was praying to, 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 to hold crusade, I really asked God for direction. And he said, go to Swansea town. Those who were with me there will testify from all indication it was obvious. We were at the right place, a place of hunger, a place of need, a place where we saw the finger of God, a place where God stopped the disaster the enemy meant. God turned things around. God gave us success probably more than our preparation. That's the leading of God. A life of prayer is the habit of being in the presence of the Lord and in communion with him continually. Listen. If there's anything you develop, praying is one you must not put aside. Pray when you feel like praying. Pray when you don't feel like praying. Pray until you feel like praying. When I was a kid in school, they taught us a song, which I don't even think the teachers knew the meaning. They say, come to the morning prayer. Come, let us kneel and pray. Prayer is the Christian's pilgrim staff to walk with God always. We just sang it in school. We didn't know the power. Praying without ceasing. In all circumstances, giving thanks for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. First Thessalonians 5, 17 and 18. So listen, you want to win to the end of this year? You want 2024 to be a winning year? Because some people will be saying, oh, we don't know how the year is going to be. It might just be an anus horribilis, like the late queen said. No, if you took your life to God, 
and bring God into your prayer, into your circumstance, it is not going to be an annus horribilis. It's going to be a year of testimony. It's going to be a year of glory. And it's going to be a year of power. So number one, in making this year end successfully and making next year strategic, you must learn to pray. Number two is plan. You say what? Yes, plan. Plan. If there is one common denominator of every successful person you know, it is that they follow a plan. Planless life is like a flood. Have you ever seen a flood before? It does not have direction like a river. A river has direction. A river has a flow. A river has a course. Flood has no direction. That's why it destroys. That's why it goes everywhere it should not go. Flood does not bring anything valuable. It destroys. So when your life has no flow, no direction, no plan, then you cannot really lay claim to anything you achieve. But some people say, but the Bible says, uh, do not take thought what tomorrow may bring. Uh, you need to know how to balance the word of God. The same scripture makes very clear that God is a planner. And he looks for those who will follow a plan. But when we say plan, it has to be God's plan for your life. Find it, follow it, and finish it. The Bible makes clear that God has a specific plan for your life. Listen, look at me. There's a general plan for all mankind to worship God, to know him. But there's a specific plan for your life to be in a certain place, to make certain impact, to be part of the whole program of God of touching humanity. There's a specific plan. So Jeremiah 29, 11 summarizes it this way. For I know the plans I have for you. Declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. So look at that statement. God's plan is to prosper you. If, so if you are not walking in prosperity, something ain't right. Plans to give you hope and the future. Two things here. No, three things in this verse. God's plan is to prosper you. God's plan is to give you hope. God's plan is to give you a future. And when you look at many people who live in our world today, they are not prospering. They are hopeless. And they don't seem to have a future. And when you trace it, you'll find that they were traveling on the road that God designed for them. But then they, they did a, a digression and thought, no, God's way is too hard for me. I want my own way. So when you are following God's way and you suddenly take a digression and follow your own way, the Bible says there's a way that seemeth good unto man. The end thereof is destruction. That's the reason many are in a mess because they don't want to follow God's plan. You see, God's plan is the blueprint for success in life. Remember, we started with prayer, now we talk with plan. It's the blueprint for success. Let's hear from the man who was successful with his life, Solomon. In Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6, he said, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Wow. In Proverbs 16, verse 3, Solomon said again, Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and your plans will succeed. So he's connecting prayer and planning. Commit to the Lord. Prayer, whatever you do, prayer. Then your plans will succeed. So they must synchronize. Prayer and planning must synchronize. If it is just planning without prayer, it is like a stool without enough legs to stand. So you need to pray. You need to plan. Number three, I will close with that this morning, is to prioritize. What is prioritize? That is find some things in life and make them a priority. Number one, sacrosanct. Without them, you are not ready to do anything. Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God 
and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you so that is that is prioritizing seeking god seeking his kingdom seek him first don't be in church on sunday because it's religious to do know jesus for yourself know god for yourself call christ into your heart serve him with a real reason a purpose listen i don't care what job you do whether you're a doctor or a cleaner whether you are an it person or an accountant these things are the things that number one it's your way of contributing to humanity number two a way of putting food on your table number three a way of using a conduit by which god can provide for you but your priority in life is to truly know god prioritize your relationship with god it's a strategy i'm telling you when you prioritize you become you become a person god blesses that's why when Job prioritized relationship with god god prospered him and god was even boasting of him the person who succeeds in life is the one who recognizes the proper priority of seeking God first seeking God first and what should you do first what should you do first it's an important question to consider otherwise you'll find yourself always giving your attention first to whatever catches your attention and not what is a priority you know some people they just run around after things that don't matter they don't matter at all I don't want to go into muddy waters this morning. But let me just say, some of you can spend one or two hours just making sure their makeup is okay. And you have never sat down to read the scriptures for 15 minutes. So which one's priority? I know that's muddy waters, but that's hard truth. You're so particular about each one of your high leads and whatever been in its proper place you spent two hours but you've never listened through a message you've never even gone through a book of the bible without reading it yourself or somebody reading it to you so what's priority and by the way you didn't even realize that you're addressing the car more than the occupant because your body is your car it's not you you see this body you're looking at this is my car one day, it shall, that's why the day a man just takes his last breath. <sighs> it means the car owner has left the body. And so that's why the car falls apart. It's really very funny. The, the car industry, the body, the industry that makes the body look nice is very huge. While the real man is dying. Many have not prioritized their spirit man. So it has been said that it is a wise man or who a wise woman who lives by majoring on majors instead of majoring on minors. Some people major on minor. They major on minor. In fact, and in our community, let me, even if it is muddy waters, that's fine. In our community, you'll find people who carry a $2,000 bag with hundred dollars inside it. While in another community, they'll carry a hundred dollar bag with $2,000 inside it. It shows priority. That way I show people. So in order for you to prioritize, to do that, you and I must be able to figure out what things in life are major, what's major to you. What things in life are truly important. What things in life are trivial or non-essential. When I was raising my sons, I found that I'm a man who desired to have degrees in theology, but I had to make a decision between really pursuing and getting the master's degree and being there to just be home, to see that the men rose and became men. I had to prioritize. You see, the Bible says, Colossians 3, verse 1 and 2, keep seeking the things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind. Did you see that? Mind on the things above. Mind. Not on the things that are on earth. Your mind. 
Some people have a bankrupt account in heaven. Bankrupt. Because they have never made contribution to anything. They don't prioritize the kingdom of God. They prioritize how we perceive them. How we see them. Let me close this morning by teaching one more part of our teaching today. And that is number four. So number one was to pray. Number two was to plan. Number three was to prioritize. And if you want a strategic life, a winning life, number four is that you must prepare for everything you do. Prepare for your prayer life. Prepare for your worship. Prepare for a successful life. You don't stumble into success by accident. It is prepared for. Proper preparation is essential for running our race. Proper preparation is a necessity for achieving. Every success is a product of adequate preparation. This message I'm teaching you, I prepared for it for hours. I did not assume that having prayed for 49 years or 50, I could just talk and you will receive something. I had to pray. I had to prepare. I had to really hear in my spirit what could help you manage the end of this year and manage the coming year. Preparation includes development of your character. You want to live successfully? You need to develop your character. Develop your person. Pursue character. Pursue growing. Preparation requires discipline and work. Discipline. Work. Discipline. Work. Discipline your body. You want to live long? It's not enough to confess scripture. Exercise. Develop your physical body. This morning before I came to teach you, I've done two hours exercise. Woke early, took the time to pray. Exercise, one hour of walking the estate where our home is and one hour on the treadmill. I'm going to live long. I'm going to play my part and leave the rest to God. I can't sit down and live a sedate, inactive life and just be taken in so much product in food and drink and just think life just happens. So preparation. You need to be strategic with your life, your mental life, strategic, your spiritual life, strategic, your physical life, strategic, your relationships. Listen, listen. F smartly exit people who put you down. Smartly. And those smartly package and put in a box those who make no contribution to your life. Then, smartly put in another box, users. They know the language to use. And they raise their begging to a crescendo with you. Package them somewhere. I was watching, I was reading yesterday, and I said, I know the feeling, bro. I know the feeling, bro. I was reading uh, in the news yesterday. Uh, I think his name is something, Mikel. He played for Chelsea, a Nigerian footballer. And he said, the sadness of life is having relations who just give birth to children and expect you to educate their children. You've got to reach, so you've got to reach a place where you also draw a line. Somebody comes, oh, my children, they are dying. Yeah, I know that God can help use you. Oh, bro, whatever I have for charity this year have been exhausted. Come next year. God bless you. And look elsewhere. Praise the Lord. One time, somebody who kept begging. I said, why can't your husband work? She said, ah, he's a minister of the gospel, and the Lord told him not to do anything secular. Oh, so the business I do is secular. Well, the same God who gave me permission to do business, now told him not to do, let the Lord provide for him elsewhere. You know, users, they know the language. You need to be strategic. Champions are never made at the moment of competition. They are made during the preparation. 
preparation time leading up to the moment of competition. Prepare. Get yourself ready. You will win in 2024. You will succeed. You will achieve. You will break through. You will reach where God is taking you. You will be the best. You will make impact. But don't let nobody use you. Don't let nobody mess with you. Don't let nobody mess with your mind. Don't let nobody mess with your Christian life. Prepare to win. Prepare to succeed. Prepare to achieve. Prepare to be the best. All those athletes you see breaking world records in, in athletics, they didn't win in the stadium. They won in the backyards where they prepared. Those boxers you see, the pugilists who bring men down inside that ring, they first won when they were somewhere practicing and preparing. They only came to the arena to show us in public what they had prepared for. You don't just wake up one day and say, hey, I'm going to go fight uh, Joshua. What's his first name? I don't even know. And then you show up. Man, one punch from that guy, you see the stars and hear the rolling thunder because you did not prepare. But he prepared. He prepared. Preparation is never wasted time. It is what gets you ready to become the best that you should be. In Matthew 25, verse 1 to 13, we read about some bridesmaids. They knew that the bridegroom would come at night. Ten had oil and everything ready. Ten had no oil. They were hoping, and I see that a lot. They were hoping that one day some woman nearby will sell oil when the bridegroom comes. Suddenly the noise was in town. The bridegroom has come. Five had oil. They just turned their lights on. The ones who had no oil said, can you just pour some of the oil in? I said, no, sorry. So that it will not be insufficient for both of us. Go and look for those who sell. <laughs> Too many people don't prepare in life and they want to mess your own life up. Your life will not be messed up. These people got to the party because they were prepared. They got there because they had oil. Those who did not have the oil, they messed themselves up. The others had the same opportunities, but failed to prepare. Listen, listen, you and your friends, you have the opportunity of being on earth, the opportunity of preparing in life. What did you do with your time? Were you strategic? Were you wasting it talking, hanging around, just going all over the place? Or being in a place of prayer, the place of planning, the place of prioritizing, and the place of preparation. How many are willing to put in the effort to be successful? The sweat, the tears required behind the scene before they get and see the result. No person gets a first class in a university if they didn't pay the price. No person distinguishes themselves without pushing their skill and their ability. And I was a student in a seminary. I prepared a sermon one day. The lecturer could just tell. He knew that I was gifted with preparing, but I did not put enough effort. And he wrote a note on my, on my assignment that practically was part of changing my life. He said, this is ordinary. If you put extra behind this, you're ordinary. You will stand out. He didn't know that that correction was what corrected a lot of my life. Listen, put extra behind your ordinary. Extraordinary prayer, extraordinary planning, extraordinary prioritizing, extraordinary preparation. Be the best. Stand up among your peers. Stop comparing yourself to those you went to school with. Be a thousand miles ahead of them. Prepare and be ready for what lies ahead. Start preparing today. Start dreaming today. Start envisioning today. Listen, listen, listen. December is going to present to you opportunities. January will present to you opportunities. February will present to you opportunities. March, April, May, June, July will present to you opportunities. I pray for you. You will not fail. You will succeed. You will achieve. You will go forward. You will be blessed. You will be on top and not under. You will be above and not below. And I pray for you today. You will not blame anybody. You will not be said, and hey, somebody discriminated against me. It's racial discrimination going on in the country. We'll burn down Babylon one day. 
Hey, stop all those nonsense. Stop all those nonsense. All those guys who've been burning down Babylon. People have met them in the country. Pass them because they are busy playing the blame game. You need to wake up with your life. Stop blaming anyone. Start waking up. Start achieving. Start being strategic. And it's not too late. I've seen people send themselves back to school at 50. You heard me tell the story before of a young man in Ghana who when he was like almost, uh, when he was like 35, that was when he, he enrolled in uni. And before you know, he had his first degree. Before you know, he had his master's. Before you know, he had his PhD. In fact, as I talk to you, he owns a university. And as I'm talking to you right now, Titi has already gone back again to school to do a degree in law. So he has a PhD and uh, he's, he's also studying to get a degree in law. He just said, I just, I just, when he had cause to be in court over a matter where somebody tried to incriminate him, and he was so intrigued by the depth about law. Now, every time TT is still my protocol when I'm in Ghana, my security with his PhD, he still will sleep on the couch just to watch over me. But you know, it's so stretched his life. Stretched his life. He's doing a PhD, he's doing a, a degree in law now. The people with whom he started are still doing security guard. Still doing security guard. Stop sitting on your blessed assurance and telling yourself, it's not my fault. It's, uh, I have so many children. I'm just tired. Hey, wake up. What would you like to do with your life? What would you like to achieve? What impact would you like to make? Stop blaming your kids. Stop blaming your husband. Stop blaming your wife. Stop blaming life. Stop blaming society. Start being something. I see you succeed. I see you achieving. I see you breaking new grounds. I see you reaching levels you've never reached. I see you entering new levels. I see you achieving. I see laughter on your face. I see celebration in your life. I see new doors opening for you. I see you getting to places you never thought you would get. I see 2024 being one of the best years you have ever lived. I prophesy on you in the closing of this message, you shall be victorious. You shall be a conqueror. You shall be an overcomer. The blood of the Lamb shall speak for you. You will have victory. The kind of victory that will be a testimony. I declare the Lord will surround you with his sword and shield. Favor will be in your life. Crooked places will be made straight for you. Doors that were shut shall be made open for you. The Lord himself will strengthen you. He will strengthen your inner man. The unction of the Holy Ghost will rest, up, rest upon you. I declare into your life today, you will have right standing with God. You will be blessed. I will speak into your life today. The sanctification of God in your life will speak for you. Your consecration will speak for you. You will be the head and not the tail. You will be above and not below. You will be blessed and not unblessed. Sickness, disease will leave your body. Viruses and infections will die from your body and you will be strong. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. In this season of your life, you will be strengthened. I speak into your life today that you are victorious on every side. Aramota, Aramosha. Somebody hearing me this morning? I release you from fear and anxiety. I release you from fretting. I release you from anxiety about things. I release you from care. I release you from all the evil reports they gave you in recent time that is worrying your mind. I speak into your life. I declare and decree good news, good news, good news, good news is coming. The Lord gave us a word. I believe during the morning glow that before Christmas, a massive good news is coming. You are part of that good news. You will receive it. You will enjoy it. No weapon formed against you will prosper. Mouths that rise against you in judgment shall be condemned. Anyone waiting for evil news concerning you, they will wait and wait. It shall not come to pass. The serpents and scorpions that are in the end of the year, you will tread upon them. They shall not have power over you. And in 2024, 
You will be a terror to the kingdom of Satan. You will lay hand on the sick, they will recover. You will cast out demons, they will be out. You will quench fiery darts of the enemy. Hariketo, prekaderosa, ranishka di branusa li kateleri rabo. You will reign as a king on the earth. You will do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You'll be a blessing. To your generation, you'll be a blessing. I declare again, you'll be a blessing. I say one more time, you'll be a blessing. I speak into your life, you'll be a blessing. I speak to your life today again, I say you'll be a blessing. Listen to me, don't let the devil run you out of town. You are rich, you are valuable, you are potent. The resources of God are available to you. You will not settle for less. You will not settle for mediocre, average life. Your life will stand out to the glory of God. The best of God is coming your way. This year is ending with a big bang of testimony, big bang of favors, big bang of glory, big bang of breakthrough. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Oh, glory to God. Somebody give God a praise this morning. Give God a praise. Give God a praise. Give God a praise. Hallelujah. I'm sure you were blessed this morning. I'm sure you were blessed this morning. Praise the Lord. I'm going to take the time. Look, please have a seat, have a seat, have a seat, have a seat. We want to worship the Lord with our tithe. We want to worship the Lord with our offering. We want to worship the Lord with that which he has provided. Praise the Lord. We want to celebrate the goodness of God with that which he has brought into our lives. The time has come for you to enjoy your God to be blessed by him. The heavens are going to open on you. The favor of God is going to rest on you. The glory of the Lord will be upon your life. The testimony of Jesus Christ will be so awesome on your life. We're going to give this morning our tithe. We're going to bless the Lord with that which he has provided for us. And we want to celebrate Jesus. Listen, wherever you are this morning, the Lord Jesus expects us and requires us to give. Say, give, it shall be given to you. The Lord Jesus wants us to give for the right reasons. The Lord Jesus wants us to be benevolent in our surrendering our seat. We're going to do it with excitement, with joy. The tithe is a command. God commands us to bring the tithe. And we don't look at the size. Rather, we should look at the size of what God is about to do. Let's bring our tithe. Let's bring our offerings. Let's bring our giving. Let's worship God. Let's bless the Lord with that which has provided for us. Praise the Lord. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. We're going to give to the Lord right now, and after that, we take the announcements. Let's give, let's give, let's give, let's give. Let's give to the Lord. This is my victory song, Jesus be glorified, he has taken my pain and given me laughter, hey. I got a new song in my heart, and a melody in my mouth, I will sing for joy, tell the word of his great words, Emmanuel has done it again, oh. Emmanuel has done it again.
Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we speak your blessing on that which we sow today. Prosper your people, increase them, show them your favor. Let the blessings of heaven and earth rest on them. Favor their hands, favor their lives. Bring increase, bring testimony. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. Well, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Couple of announcements to bring the service to a close. We celebrate the goodness of God. Let me just encourage you about today's messages. The next service is going to be so powerful. So, so powerful. The mystery of God's supernatural mercy. The mystery of the mercy of God. The mystery of God's supernatural mercy. Oh, when mercy speaks for you, what can speak against you? When mercy stands for you, who can be against you? Mercy brought us this far. Mercy saved us. Mercy opens doors. Mercy cries on our behalf. When the devil says kill, God mercy, God's mercy says save. When mercy says, when the devil says destroy, God's mercy says protect. Mercy goes ahead and gives us what we do not deserve. I'll be sharing this morning in that next service six powerful elements of the mercies of God and 15 blessings. Oh, it's going to be just great. Don't miss the next service. Mercy is about to crowd for you to the end of this year and the, and the new year. In Jesus' name. Evening service is going to be great. Don't miss it. Hey, we're in the week of winning women's conference. Somebody put your hands together. Give God the biggest praise. Give him biggest praise. Give him the biggest praise. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Women's conference is going to be absolutely awesome. There will be a blessing. The heavens will open. It's going to be a week of sharing on business, career, health, well-being, family matters, image consulting, and other exciting things and interactive activities. There will also be a business fair. Some people will come and showcase their businesses. You should take advantage if you are one of those who haven't taken a stall yet. This year's conference, Thrive, will truly challenge you to grow, to thrive, to increase, to blossom, to bear fruit in every area. There's a limited number of T-shirts. Make sure you get yours. And there's also a T-shirt competition. I think they're doing a design. Let's just hope yours will be the best one. Praise the Lord. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So make sure we see the one that is... Uh, that is going to be the strongest. All right. Praise the Lord. We're calling on men to be part of those who serve in the children's church. It's really a powerful thing for kids to also see men serving there. That was where I started ministry, children's ministry. Used to go speak in children's camp. Matter of fact, the lady who ran our pharmacy during the crusade, that was where she gave her life to Christ. When I was ministering at the children's camp, that's how she gave her life to Christ. Can you imagine? We're talking 47 years ago. Praise the Lord. So, man, please, let's serve. KRCC has, has been very uh, strong and responsible for touching thousands of people over a course of something like 10 to 12 years since we started our hamper uh, ministry, providing food and hampers to the community, a thousand hampers. It has cost so much, but it has blessed so much. May I challenge you this year, as you think of your family and Christmas gifts and Christmas giving, that you take the time to think of a family whom if you presented one or two of these boxes as they open the children will find enough food for christmas day and some gifts for the children this year the cost has risen to 40 pounds but the content is usually far more may i challenge you to be part of krcc's christmas hamper please go out of your way go out of your way sacrifice and touching lives ministering to people can never, never be quantified eternally. We have a short time. 
is between now and probably the week before Christmas. Let us do it. We need to gather everything by the 18th of December and make this presentation to families. Please go out of your way and give towards it. And talking about Christmas, we also have the Christmas Connect 2023 on the 10th of December. All the churches in the Kent area will come to KRCC Prayer City and connect together. It's going to be the night of the wonders of Christmas as we celebrate the Savior who died for us, the one who came that we may live. Let's rejoice and enjoy together. Speaker is Nikki Gumbel. Nikki Gumbel is fantastic, a gift to the body of Christ. He was the one responsible for preparing a teaching material that went global and brought many people to Christ, known as the Alpha Course. So go out of your way and invite people for that day. I'm sure you were blessed by this morning's service. Let me encourage you about tomorrow's morning glow and the whole of the week. We trust the Lord that this week you'll be blessed at the place of the morning glow. And on Wednesday, life class, I mean, the Bible study has been a powerful one. We've been teaching how to walk in the power of God. Last week I digressed and just began to teach on the thing that really becomes the 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 absolutes of christianity it was such a blessing last week such a strong blessing you will be blessed don't miss it by any chance one more time i want to say a very big thank you to all those who participated in the crusade we just had in africa it was huge it was great it was fantastic 99 percent of everyone who participated is now back in the uk maybe just except me who will be back soon i accepted to speak the church tonight for Bishop uh, Okonkwo, that's the reason. Uh, I wasn't on ground. I really wanted to be in service today, but I cannot uh, cancel my responsibility of having accepted to speak for him. A big thank you to all of you. Oh, my God. KRCC London and all those who responded to come, these people sacrificed. They bought their own ticket. They flew down, paid for their own hotel. We only provided lunch. They worked. They stood in 31, 32 degrees sun. Oh, they also stood in, what shall I call the 30 something degree of rain the first night. That day, the heavens opened, the sky, the sky poured. The, the stadium became a river of miracles. I mean, the, the rain fell on the people and nobody moved. The people did not move. It was something else. And that's why the rain. Over 2,000 gave their lives to Christ that night. We had over 10,000 decisions for Christ. People were gathering the cards. We were only able to capture maybe 4,600 on card, but we know that more than 10,000 gave their life. And that is even with me panicking on the medical day. We were supposed to do a major preaching service and altar call. When I got to the stadium, I was I panicked because I just didn't know how we're going to deal with the no less than 50,000 who showed on the medical day. I'm thinking, even if you brought all the doctors in Lagos State, how are you going to manage all the people who showed for the medicals? But God is just absolutely awesome. <laughs> I've never seen Pastor MC even panic like she did because KICC in London were the ones responsible for registration. She came, shut down registration. <laughs> it was absolutely awesome. Absolutely awesome. I am so proud of KICC members in London, man. We gave and 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 gave for the five days of the giving. And four days of giving, and then the fifth day of the medicals. Oh, jeez, oh, jeez, oh, jeez. Uh, and then, yeah, Pastor MC was able to go to the place of the surgery. We had 287 surgeries in five days. The doctors were supposed to close by six. They became so compassionate themselves. They were closing by 10. And on the last day, they closed by 11. 
287. That is a record breaker. It's a record breaker. Oh, God. Each person who had the surgery were grateful. Very grateful. One of them went on radio and said a particular hospital said, if you can't pay for your surgery, go home and die. And then we showed and gave them free surgery. The worship was like, it wasn't like a crusade. It was like a revival. This, this dentistry, this is dentistry. Jesus, man. Jesus, man. We had more people with, forgive my French, rotten teeth needing to pull out than the dentist could cope. They pulled out 650 bad teeth. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, my God. 650 bad teeth, man. And we had to pay 5,000 per teeth pulled out. Those ones, they were not playing. These particular dentists, they were not playing. They pulled out 650 bad teeth. Did. They wanted to also be polished. I said, hey, I have no money for polish. Anybody who needs a polish, let them go and polish their teeth in their house. Just pull out the rotten teeth and fix their mouth as much as you can. I think they still polish some. Oh, the testimony is too much to give in any, in one day. One more time. Everyone served. Oh, I can still see all those brothers, all those sisters running around all over the place, carrying load, giving gifts, standing on their feet, non-stop, 32 degrees sun. We even see all people turning the box of uh, the noodles box, once it is empty, they turned it to a cap to wear because the sun was too hot. Oh, this first crusade is, uh, is uh, exhilarating. Pray for me. God is laying some things in our heart that will make us even make more impact in Africa. So we're going to be holding a crusade. No, not a crusade. A conference in March. This one, you Londoners. Nobody wants to come, they can come, but the one, this one is just a conference for evangelists it's called Cure. Cure Africa 2024. Just Cure Africa. C U R E. Conference of Urban and Regional Evangelists 2024. I'm going to bring regional and urban evangelists across Africa together to KRCC Maryland. Train them for three days, put fire on their tail send them back to their regions to go and set their villages on fire. We're going to maybe buy public address system for a thousand of them. So we're going to look for where they make it in China instead of buying from some merchants here. I'll see if we can just buy straight from China and put in the hand of 1,000 evangelists. We only did 140. This one was like testing microphone. So we're going to bring together and thinking, we'll advertise, who knows, might have 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 uh, urban and regional evangelists. We call it Cure, Cure, Af Cure Africa, Cure Africa 2024, uh, Conference of Urban and Regional Evangelists. We're going to bring them from across, get speakers who will teach on evangelism to talk to them, Steve Mensah. Mohamed Sanogo, who holds crusades in the French world. E Ivan Castano, who also has seen explosion in his works. And local guys here too. Fire up the evangelists. Send them back to their villages because we all cannot reach everywhere. We can only hold those kind of CCRW crusades one or two in a year. Even just one is uh, ouchy, ouchy, ouchy on the pocket. Thank you so much. Some of you, you gave three times, four times. We kept seeing your alerts. May the Lord prosper you, prosper you, increase you, and show you uncommon favor. May you be blessed in everything you lay your hands on. May the heavens open on you. May your dreams become reality. Souls got saved because of you. Souls got blessed because of you. Families that had no food. People slept in the stadium so they can collect. We wanted to serve a Kurudu Ibogu and the villages. People traveled from seven hours. Ogomosho or Yo. They came Koshobo. They came from far places. They came from parts of Lagos. 
touched lives. Ba two babies were born during the crusade, one on crusade ground, and one uh, that was uh, caesarean, and we had to pay for the, the burden of the, of the baby. The mother, the father came to say thank you. This is the last night you're watching on the screen now. This is the last night of the crusade. Jesus, man. It was out of this world. We return all the glory to Jesus. It had nothing to do with Matthew Ashimolo. It had nothing to do with our preparation. It had nothing to do with our equipment. It had everything to do with the visitation of God. Satan was fully, completely, 110% shamed in this crusade. Oh, one day I shall give another part of the testimony that has to do with exposures that God gave us, revelations of some insidious things some people were planning. And as they are planning it in their room, God was revealing it to us and God was frustrating what they planned. We shall share all of it with you in due course. We shall share it with you. Thank you for making this first one a success. We're now having so many Macedonian calls. We have heard the Macedonian call today. Send the light, send the light. I'm just praying to know the right city and the right place to go to. We don't want to just go because it's going to feel good. We don't want to feel good. We want to hear God. But that cure one, cure 2024, conference of urban and regional evangelists. We want to bring them together. Put some fire on their tail. Send them back. And see something happen in Africa because three, four things are happening in Africa. Africa is now 60% under 30. Under 30 years old. 60% of the continent. And there's a huge explosion of Islam. We need to put the evangelists on fire. I need to close now. Thank you for giving me your time and listening to me. The Lord bless you. The Lord prosper you. The Lord increase you. The Lord show you favor. May the Lord lift you. Make you above, not under. May this month, as it comes to an end, be a month of testimony for you, a month of increase, a month of favor, a month of open doors. We speak blessing on the Winning Women's Conference visitations of God, revelations from God, testimonies from God, incredible outstretching of the hand of God. Everyone who comes to minister will be a blessing. The week will be totally packed with the favor of God. In the name of Jesus, in this season of your life, God will arise for you. Your enemies will be scattered. You will have testimonies, testimonies, testimonies. That thing he said he would do before Christmas, we receive, we receive, we receive. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. i see you in the next service. Supernatural, mercy of God. God bless you richly. God bless.